Jesus said, Man cannot live on bread alone, but from every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. You're listening to Daily Truth. Gnosticism is the idea that the, the body is of little account, that the physical world is trivial, um, that, that it doesn't have real value. The Gnostics in, in the first century that, that the apostles were combating, the Gnostics and their false heretical teaching, what, what they were continuing to say again and again is that, you know, the body is just a prison. It's this fleshly, carnal, unvaluable, um, trivial prison for the soul. And the soul is really of value. Now, the word Gnostic comes from Gnosis. Gnosis means secret knowledge. So that's another element of Gnosticism is this idea that there's this hidden, secret, elite, spiritual knowledge. It's, it's a mystery. It's a secret. It's something that you can't see, you can't ascertain. And so what do you need? Well, you need to be, um, you need to be inducted into the cool kids club. Um, the only way to find out this really meaningful, true, the truest truth that's ever been true in the whole true world, the only way to figure that out is, uh, is you have to have one of these elite guys tell you about it because it's, it's invisible, it's hidden. You'll never find it on your own. And so there's this elitist mentality, this secret mentality, but the other element, the other aspect of Gnosticism is that it's all spiritual. It's not something that can be reasoned to. It's not something physical in the world. It's not rational. It's something that you would never be able to ascertain on your own. And sadly, that, that is a false doctrine that was combated by the apostles in the first century Christian church. But sadly, that is something that, that the Western church in the last few, I would say, I don't know, 150, maybe 300 years has really embraced in large part because of the Enlightenment. And the embrace of Gnosticism, and now pietism, real briefly, pietism is this idea, well, to sum it up in a phrase, the old phrase, uh, that guy is so heavenly bound or heavenly focused that he's no earthly good. Have you ever heard that phrase before? He's so heavenly minded, he's no earthly good, right? That, that he's just thinking about floating on a cloud as a disembodied spirit with Jesus for eternity. Um, but he's not really engaged in the physical world at all. He's not really caring about practical matters, physical matters, earthly matters at all. Surely we should be heavenly minded. But being heavenly minded in a true biblical sense immediately calls us right back to earth. And just as Connor was saying, uh, true saving faith, trusting the Lord Jesus, longing for, for eternal union with him, there, there's, there's fullness of joy in his presence. There, in his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. And the Christian longs for these things, but in longing for Christ and in longing for, for a spiritual, eternal reality with Christ, longing for heaven for the Christian, immediately calls us back to earth. Because if we love Christ, Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey me. And when we look to the commands of Christ, they all have physical, tangible, earthly application. So Christ said, you love me and you long to be with me always. Great, work and feed your kids. Oh, okay. Hey, you love me and you long to be with me in heaven. Great. Okay, love your wife as I've loved the church. See the spiritual marriage, eternal marriage, Christ and the church. See how I love her. I wash her. I gave my, myself up for her. Okay, you go do that in physical, tangible, earthly ways. Here, now, with a woman in front of your face that you can see. Not just this ethereal, universal, invisible sense, but in a real sense. Don't be a pietist. P uh, piety is a good thing. Piety, is the, the, the Puritans often spoke of piety. Piety is simply, it's the spiritual disciplines. It's study of scripture, it's fasting, it's prayer. It's longing to be further sanctified and, and conformed into the image of Christ. It's the desire for progressive holiness. Progressive, not positional. You are positionally perfectly righteous the moment you believe because positional perfect righteousness is the righteousness of Christ, which is received not progressively and gradually through obedience, but rather immediately and fully through grace and faith alone. Okay, but, but the desire for progressive righteousness, progressive holiness, sanctification, this is piety. Piety, good. Pietism, bad. Piety, good. 
But being a pietist, in the sense that I'm using the word, is a bad thing. It's the person who who doesn't really care about the world. And the, the thing that's so wrong about not really caring about the world is that we're called to be like God. And guess what? God cares about the world. God so loved the world that he sent his only son. God cares about this world. So we don't want to be Gnostic, secret, spiritual, ethereal knowledge in the 17th dimension. And we don't want to be pietist, just sitting, right? My Christian life involves 12 hours of sitting and thinking about heaven. But I've done nothing in any practical terms. That no, these are not positive things. Mm-hmm.